Hi guys, I'm Ben from Adapt Looks, and I'm back today to bring you another macro photography tutorial. Uh, this time we're shooting leaves, uh, specifically dried leaves. Um, leaves in general, a very popular macro photography subject. Um, dried, dried ones are a little bit uh, trickier to shoot for, for several reasons, uh, but we're going to find out uh, how we get on in just a second. that I've got to shoot today are a little bit different to your uh, ever popular leaf macro photography shots in that they're they're completely dry. I, I grabbed these in the autumn a couple of months ago um, and they've been left out to dry on my bookshelf. So we've got um, four different leaves. They're all they're all very similar but um, uh, but slight variations, slight differences. Um, but they're going to be more challenging to shoot than uh, a normal leaf shot. Um, in that they're they're very sort of dry, crispy. Uh, all of the edges are bent over, so it's going to be tricky to uh, to focus on the entire thing. Um, but there's some interesting features on the le these leaves, like uh, very pronounced veins on on the back side of the leaves. Uh, obviously, the green colour is gone, and we're left with the the browny autumn colour. But there's still some really interesting colour variations in here that we can take advantage of um, using the Adapt Look Studio lighting. I'm also going to be trying some experimental stuff as we like to do with the uh, with the coloured lighting arms um, and we'll see how we get on with that. Uh, for our lighting though we're going a little bit different this time. Uh, if you've seen our other macro photography uh, tutorials which I'll uh, link up on the screen now um, you'll notice that we usually or I prefer to use the Adapt Look Studio off camera and set up a scene using our lighting that way. Today we're going to be shooting freehand uh, with the lighting attached to the camera. And I'll show you a little bit about that now. In all of our packs, we've always provided the means to attach uh, the Adaptilux control pod to the hot shoe of the camera. And we do that using um, a cold shoe adapter that just slides onto the top there. Um, but recently we've developed this uh, new little gadget here, uh, which is an extension of that, and it'll give you a little bit more flexibility and control about how you mount your um, pod onto your camera or other things for that matter because this is um, a GoPro style attachment so you can uh, unscrew this and attach the, the Adapt Lux adapter onto any GoPro compatible uh, mounts or devices. On here we've just got a little uh, cold shoe adapter which slides onto the hot shoe of the camera um, and then the control pod simply screws it onto the top of that as well and that means that you can get uh, a lot of more height over your your lenses it means you can adjust this up or down and obviously you can just plug in a lighting arm and manipulate that round to exactly where your subject is sat in front of your lens so we're going to be doing exactly that and using our leaves to uh, to get some really cool shots freehand with our leaves laid out on the table, there's nothing too special going on with this setup, considering that we're going uh, we're going freehand. Uh, we don't need to worry about the backdrop so much. We don't need to worry about setting everything up meticulously like we do um, in some of our other uh, macro photography scenarios. Um, here we're just going to lay out our subjects. We're going to plug in some lighting arms into the control pod and then we're going to pick up the camera and we're going to go for it. Uh, the aim of the game here is to experiment, change around your lighting, move around the subject um, and going freehand uh, really gives you the ability to move all the way around your subject, experiment with uh, different angles um, and see what you can get. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to set off and see what I can get out of these, uh, these leaves and change around some of our, our different colours, our lighting arms and use some diffusers and colour filters as well to, uh, to really try and bring out some colour and some, uh, some focused in interest in these, uh, in these leaves. So I'm going to get going.
We're getting some really great shots so far, but I just wanted to stop for just a second to uh, give you some tips about how to set up your lighting uh, for going freehand like this, whether it's going out on a, on a photo walk in the woods or uh, at home like I'm doing here you're going to want to try and get your lighting arms uh, roughly in position before uh, you start shooting because holding the camera with one hand and manipulating the lighting arm with the other hand is a little bit awkward um, and it can take some time to try and get it exact. This is a much faster way. All I've done is set my uh, my lens to a, a single focal point so it's it's around here, a set distance from the front of the lens. What that means is you can then move your, your camera in and out in order to focus rather than uh, changing the focus ring. Um, and if you've got a set distance from the front of the lens, you know exactly where your subject's gonna be. So if we bring a subject into, or roughly into focus here, um, I can then see that my lighting arms are quite far away um, and they could be moved a little bit closer, they can be balanced a little bit better as well. So I'm going to bring the green lighting arm in nice and close and then the blue lighting arm as well. Um, and you can see already that the uh, the picture's a lot brighter because obviously the, uh, the lights are closer um, and there's a better balance between the green and the blue. So what that means is that I can pick up my camera and start exploring around my subject. Um, without having to worry too much about what my lighting is doing. It's got a nice even balance between the green on the right hand side of the image and the blue on the left hand side of the image. Um, and you can make minor adjustments, uh, you can do the same thing by adding colour filters and setting the balance uh, with diffusers and, and things like that. It's just about setting things up as, as close as possible before you start shooting because manipulating the lighting arms around like this, you can end up with uh, lighting arms in the picture, which is not ideal, um, and the balance of your colours could be off. Uh, so I, I like to uh, set this up uh, beforehand. I'm going to keep shooting for a little while longer, and uh, then we're going to change things up a little bit. I'm getting some really great shots uh, shooting with a setup like this, um, and you can see that I've actually uh, I've taken the... Um, the pro mount here and pointed it downwards so that the pod is angled downwards and I can get the, the lighting arms down and underneath the uh, underneath the leaves underneath the subject. Um, but I actually want to take that to the next level. I'm going to keep shooting freehand with the camera so that I can keep that freedom of moving around um, and, and finding the shot. Uh, but I'm going to pop the, the studio onto a stabiliser and make that static so that our lighting can actually come from truly underneath, from behind these leaves. Because I think that's going to really accentuate some of the, the veins that are standing out in these leaves and give some really cool effects as the light shines through. So I'm going to find out what that looks like and uh, I'll show you in a second. So let me show you what I've done here. Um, I've got the, the the studio over here down on a stabilizer, which keeps it nice and close to the ground. Um, and I've got two white lighting arms, one with a green color filter on it, and one with a pink color filter on it. Um, just pointing slightly upwards so that we can actually rest a leaf right on top there. And the light shines through the leaf, including in all of the little, uh, you can see there's like little cracks and things where the leaf has dried and been damaged and things like that. And actually it shines through really nicely through those little cracks and provides a really interesting um, little highlight in, in the shot. Uh, without those cracks though, if we get a, a better quality leaf, um, it still shines through and creates some really interesting um, contrasts between uh, the different parts of the leaf where, where things have decayed and things haven't, the, 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 ve the veins are, and they don't let any light through at all so they come up as shadows um, and it's really interesting to experiment with this, move around the leaf and try and spot different areas that look particularly interesting and obviously change the leaves around, move the leaves around. Um, shooting the back of the leaf I find is more interesting as well uh, but you might find that the front provides some interesting uh, contrasts and colours as well. I'm going, to, uh, I'm going to keep going with this for a little while and see if I can't get some really interesting shots out of it.
So I hope you can see from some of the shots that we've just got that moving the lighting really made the world of difference between uh, the two different styles of shot. Obviously shooting from above here we can get um, a contrasting colours as it, as it moves off the ridges of the, uh, of the veins on the leaves. We can go uh, freehand on the camera and explore all of these curved over edges which is really cool. Um, but then moving the lighting behind the leaf, uh, the light shines through and highlights all of the detail in the leaf itself. So all of the, the residual colours and differences um, as the leaf has dried out, obviously you've got lots of browns and greens and still left in there. Um, getting the right shot along those veins on the back side of the leaves makes it look like a, sort of a, an aerial shot of some valleys and things like that. Really, really interesting and I hope that um, works to demonstrate that the lighting when you're thinking about macro photography, macro photography subjects is absolutely paramount. Um, because we've used the same lights, we've used the same camera, the same subject, but simply moving that lighting from one position to another, from on top of the subject to underneath the subject, that has made the world of difference. And it's really worth experimenting with things like that, um, just to see what it looks like. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work, but try it out and see what happens. Um, but that's it for, for today. That's, that's uh, me experimenting with some leaves, um, make sure to, to let us know in the comments what you think and make sure to let us know what you guys do with, with leaves and plants and things like this and how you use your Adaptlook Studio lighting or any other lighting. I'd like to know what you guys can do. Um, you can send your, your pictures to pictures at adaptlooks.com and we'll, we're more than happy to, uh, to get into hours worth of discussion about what you like to do um, and what you like to see and especially in more videos like this there's more to come so make sure to subscribe and let us know what you would like to see us try out with Adapt Looks Lighting. Until then I'll see you next time.